Hi, I'm Matthew DeLong, and I'm going to show you how to use heavyweight callbacks with DataSnap thin clients. This is part two. In part one, I showed you how to do this with thick clients. This video will make more sense to you if you've seen part one already. So I'll go ahead and go to the server project I had started in part one, and I will add a few more components that we need for thin clients. I need a HTTP service. I need a file dispatcher. A proxy generator. And a metadata provider. So for the proxy generator, I'll set the metadata provider and the writer type to be JavaScript. And the metadata provider, I'll set it to the server so that the proxy generator indirectly can figure out that it needs to use this DS server instance to get the proxy information. And I will set the HTTP service for file dispatcher so that this service on port Let's change this to port 8089. I know I have that free. So any requests for files on 8089 will go through the file dispatcher. And I'll change the root directory here to a directory that exists on my machine already. It's C demos callbacks. And then I'll go to the proxy generator and I'll set its target directory to be the same directory so that the proxy is generated into the same directory that the other web files are located. And I'll call it server functions.js. That's the file it'll be generated into. And now I'll add a vote before dispatch event to the file dispatcher. And what this will do is um, if somebody is requesting the JavaScript proxy file and it isn't cr created yet, if it doesn't exist yet, it will create it. Space here. And if the file doesn't exist, then we'll generate it. save the change and I'll show you the directory on my computer has callback framework.js json min js and server function executor js these files you would get from the rest uh, data snap server wizard if you use that and I have demo HTML, which I wrote just to save time for this demo. I'll show you the contents. Here is the HTML. Um, I have a form submit button for start callback, one for stop callback, which maps to the start callback Java func JavaScript function or the stop callback JavaScript function. And there's a text area called memo channel. In the JavaScript up here, there's a start callback function which creates a new client channel, gives it a unique identifier, and it says memo channel here, which is the same ID as memo channel on the server. If you go back to the server here, you can see memo channel. So that's gonna be the same value. It creates a new callback with a unique ID and an anonymous function here that takes a JSON value as a parameter and data type, which isn't going to be used in this case. So if the JSON value is something we care about, 
then it gets the text field and it sets the value to the JSON value, which in this case is just going to be a string, and it's going to be the value of the memo field on the server. So that's the end of the anonymous function. Then here you call channel.connect with the first callback. You need to call that with one callback. You can add more callbacks, but you need at least one. And then do some button enablement. And for the stop callback function, it just sees if there's a channel. If there is, it disconnects it, and then does some more button enablement. And that's it. So I will run this now so you can see it. I run the server. And actually, here I have to make a change. I need to set the server in the service here. And now if I run it again, and open a web browser, I go to localhost 8089 demo.html. It loads, uses the file dispatcher to load that file. And now if I'm typing on the server, I don't see it at first. If I hit start callback, then I get updated. If I hit stop callback again, I don't see any updates. If I hit start again, I see the updates, just like with the thick client. So that's it for part two of using heavyweight callbacks with thin clients. I hope you found this useful. Thank you.